Hi, hi, how are you doing? Please note that this is lesson number three. So if you've not watched lesson number one, lesson number one talked about the terminologies of uh, under circle theory. And uh, lesson number two talked about the first four properties of a uh, circle theory. And in this lesson, which is lesson number three, we'll talk about the remaining uh, four properties under circle theorem. And please note that under circle theorem, there are eight properties that you need to know. We've covered two, uh, we've covered four. We are now finishing the remaining four properties. And please, if you did not watch the first lesson, second lesson, please click on the link in the description below. I've put the links. You can click. They will take you to where the video for lesson one and uh, lesson two are. So the first property here now will be, or in this video, or we shall call it property number six, which is this one. So property number six talks about the exterior and interior angle of the cyclic quadrilateral. So can you see, this is a cyclic quadrilateral here. So we've got point A, B, C, D, and E. So what it says, it says that the external angle right here, that's an external angle, is equal to the opposite interior angle. So you can see this angle will be equal to this. If this is 40 degrees, I like using 40. This will also be a 40 degrees. I hope you've, uh, you've gotten it. Look at this. So if I do this, this will be an exterior angle. If this is 50 degrees, which other angle inside here will be equal to this? It's an angle right over here, which is opposite here. It will be a 50 degrees. Okay, that's it about uh, the exterior and interior angle. Let's check out property number seven. We shall call this as property number seven, which talks about the tangent and uh, the radius. For property number seven, which is right over here, which says tangent and radius, they form a 90 degrees. So let me show you what, what, what it says. When you've got a radius, you can see this is a radius and this is a tangent line. So the angle between the radius and the tangent line is equal to 90 degrees. So the angle at B is a 90 degrees and even this side also it's a 90 degrees. There is no need of calculating. So the moment you see a tangent line and you see a radius, the radius, that's a line going to the center from the circumference to the center or center to the circumference. The angle between those two, tangent and the radius, it's at 90 degrees. Okay, so let's go to the next property, which is uh, property number, actually this must be property number seven here. This is number six, this is number, number, Number five. So we did four. This is a five, six, and then we go to property number seven. So for alternate segment, you can see this is uh, the property we're at. What it says, it says that when you've got uh, a tangent line, and at the point where the tangent line is, there is a segment, this one, formed by this court. You can see this segment, and also another segment, this side. So these two segments are alternating. So the angle between one of the segment, uh, between one of the segment and the tangent line will be equal to the angle that will be formed by the other segment at here inside. Okay, look at this. We shall say this angle is between this segment and the tangent line. So meaning it will be equal to the angle which will be formed by the other segment right over here. That's what this property of alternating segments mean okay so we now do the last property and after the last property we'll try to answer some exam questions so please watch this video up to the end and listen to all the information that you need to okay so for the last property it just talks about uh, two tangent lines you can see we've got this tangent line and this tangent line if they are coming from the same point some line, you see this line is joining these two tangent lines, meaning the angle here will be equal to the angle right here, okay? And simply means these two tangent lines are equal to each other from where they are touching this line and this line. So in other words, 
those two tangent lines they're just forming what we call an isosceles triangle a triangle with these two equal sides thank you so much thank you so much people for watching this has been Isichamba Jacob and please I'm reminding you to please watch the next video where I'll be answering exam questions using or applying the properties that we've discussed in this video and in lesson two and please one more thing if you've not watched lesson one and lesson two the links are right in the description below just click on on them they will take you to where the videos for lesson one and lesson two are very important for you to understand the topic thank you and bye bye